Welcome to task two of Math is an Art. Before we start our number sense routine, it is time for your teacher to assign you your art partner. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. Before we start our number sense routine, let's review our hand signals. We use these hand signals to communicate our thoughts during a number sense routine. These signals are held in front of your chest. A fist means I'm thinking about it. A thumbs up means I have an answer. And the last hand signal is how you show that you agree with something that someone else said. Our number sense routine for today is titled Same But Different. This number sense routine is from samebutdifferentmath.com. Consider these two pictures. How are they the same? How are they different? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. I noticed that these two pictures are the same because they are both rectangles. These rectangles are also the same size. I also noticed that they are both partitioned into two equal parts. I noticed they are different because they are partitioned into two equal parts in different ways. Is the same amount of blue and green represented in each picture? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. I noticed that the same amount of blue and green is represented in both pictures. If I were to think about partitioning this rectangle like this, I could see that I would have a blue square and a green square of an equal amount to my rectangle on this side. Consider these two pictures. How are they the same? How are they different? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. I notice these pictures are the same because they are both squares. I notice these pictures are different because one is partitioned into four equal parts and the other is partitioned into eight equal parts. Is the same amount of purple and gray represented in both pictures? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. I noticed that there is the same amount of purple and gray represented in each square. I noticed that I can take these two pieces and form one square that's equal to the purple square on the left side. I noticed that two of the gray triangles can form one of the gray squares on this side. I noticed that I could repeat this Therefore, there's the same amount of purple and gray in both pictures. Our learning targets for today's task are, I can partition shapes or objects into equal parts and name the fractional parts, and I can create a collage. Let's pretend this is a candy bar. How can this candy bar be shared equally by two people? Press pause, cut the candy bar into two equal parts, and discuss with your art partner. Press play when you are ready to continue. You may have noticed that some of your classmates decided to share the candy bar in a different way than you. For example, some of you may have shared the candy bar like this. Some of you may have shown the candy bar like this and some of you may have shared the candy bar like this. 
No matter how you choose to cut the rectangle into two parts, the whole rectangle can be made with two copies or iterations of one of your pieces. For example, two of these same size parts create the whole rectangle. Two of these same size parts create the whole rectangle. And two of these same size parts create the whole rectangle. Now grab a circle. Let's pretend this is a cake. How can this cake be shared equally with two people? Press pause, cut the cake into two equal parts, and discuss with your art partner. Press play when you are ready to continue. When we were discussing ways to cut the candy bar into equal parts, we noticed that some of our classmates' parts were shaped different. Do you notice this with the circles? Why or why not? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play. Here are some different ways we could have cut the circle into two equal parts. I could have partitioned the circle using a vertical line. I could have partitioned the circle using a horizontal line. Or I could have partitioned the circle using a diagonal line. What do you notice about the shape of the pieces? Although we may have cut our parts in a different position, the shape of the piece remains the same. Just like with the rectangle, we can see that our whole circle can be made up of two copies or iterations of one of your pieces. For example, two of these same size pieces makes one whole. What if I partition my candy bar like this? What do you notice about this candy bar? Can we name these halves? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. What if I partition my cake like this? What do you notice about this cake? Can we name these as halves? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. We cannot name these as halves. Halves mean there are two equal sized parts. These are simply just two pieces. Now that we have shared our candy bar and cake into two equal parts, what is the name of the amount that one person gets? On our picture, we will now show our rectangle partitioned into two equal parts. Let's do the same for our circle. When asked the amount that one person gets, we count one of the parts. In words, we say this as one half. In fraction notation, we write this with a numerator of one because we're counting one part and a denominator of two because we have two pieces that make the whole. Now let's grab another rectangle. How can this candy bar be shared equally by three people? Press pause, cut the candy bar into three equal parts and discuss with your art partner. Press play when you are ready to continue. I cut my rectangle like this. You may have decided to partition your rectangle differently than I did. The idea is that we have three equal parts. The whole rectangle can be made with three copies or iterations of one of your pieces. For example, three of these same size pieces makes one whole rectangle. These pieces are named thirds. Now let's grab another circle. How can this cake be shared equally by three people? Press pause, cut the cake into three equal parts, and discuss with your art partner. 
Press play when you are ready to continue. I noticed that we could have some different representations in the classroom. These are the most common possible representations. Can both of these be named thirds? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. These cannot be named thirds. Last task, we discussed how partitioning a circle in this way does not make equal size parts. The end pieces are not the same size as the middle piece. These are thirds. The whole circle can be made with three copies or iterations of one of these pieces. Now that we have shared our candy bar and cake into three equal parts, what is the amount that one person gets? Press pause, discuss this with your art partner, then press play when you are ready to continue. The amount that one person would get would be one third. We write this as a fraction with a numerator of one indicating the one piece we are counting and a denominator of three showing that it takes three equal sized parts to make the whole. Now let's look at this candy bar and this cake on our notes page. I would like for you to work with your art partner to partition this rectangle and the circle into fourths. Shade the amount that each person would get from the candy bar or the cake. Press pause when you are ready to continue, press play. You might have partitioned your rectangle in a different direction than how I partitioned mine. As long as we have four equal parts, we both partitioned our rectangle into fourths. The name for this fraction is one fourth. The fraction notation for one fourth is a one as a numerator and a four as the denominator because that tells us the number of pieces to make the whole. In each situation, we are only talking about one part out of a certain number of parts to make the whole. Let's look at our non-examples. I see two pieces of my candy bar. Is it fair to say that these are halves? No, it's not fair. As you can see, this side is much larger than this side. So these are not halves. Is it fair for me to partition my cake into fourths like this? It is not. This is four pieces, not fourths. They are not equal in size. Throughout the lesson, we used some vocabulary, one of the words being iteration. An iteration is a repetition. When talking about one part of each picture, we noticed that it would take a certain number of repetitions of that picture to make the whole. For example, when talking about one fourth, I know that it would take four of these pieces or four iterations of that size to make the whole rectangle. Halves, we can only call something halves if it is in two equal parts. If something is cut into three equal parts, we call them thirds. And if something is cut into four equal parts, we call these fourths. 
So we have iteration, halves, thirds, fourths. Now that we've practiced partitioning objects, like our cakes and candy bars, into two, three, and four equal parts, and naming fractional parts, we will apply what we've learned. Let's begin by exploring a painting by Paul Klee entitled Borg and Zahn, or Castle and Sun. Paul Klee was a Swiss-born artist known for his unique abstract style. Klee was part of the movement that included Expressionism, Surrealism, and Cubism. He painted the castle and sun with simplified shapes, but you can easily see the way the shapes form a castle or city-like scene. Observe the artwork closely. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Press pause, discuss this with an art partner, press play when you are ready to continue. I notice that I see shapes like the circles and rectangles that we partition during our notes. I also see triangles and squares represented as well. What emotions does this painting evoke? How has this artist used shapes and colors in their compositions? Press pause, discuss this with an art partner, press play when you are ready to continue. Now you will create your own castle or cityscape using fractional parts, halves, thirds, and fourths. While Paul Klee used paint to create his masterpiece, you will use pieces of paper to create a collage. A collage is a work of art where various materials such as bits of paper, fabric, photographs, and found objects are arranged and glued to a flat surface. Your finished project must include at least three different colors that are connected to color theory, fractional parts such as halves, thirds, and fourths, and your fractional parts must be labeled. You must also use at least two to three different geometric shapes in your composition. Take a look at Paul Klee's art to get some inspiration. But remember to be creative and create your own type of picture using fractional parts. Now it is time to work on your collage. Press pause and when you have completed your collage, press play. You will now participate in a gallery walk of your classmates collages. As you look at your classmates artwork, look for the use of color theory and fractions in their work. As you walk around, you will leave a stick on note on three pieces of work. On this sticky note, include the emotion their artwork evoked based on their use of color theory and how you see fractions in their work. You will have about 10 minutes to observe and reflect on your classmates' work. Press pause and when you have completed the gallery walk, press play to continue. Now it is your turn to show your teacher what you have learned through this lesson. You will complete the Lesson 2 Formative Assessment. Your teacher will give you more information about how you will turn this in. Press pause, then press play when you are ready to continue. We have now reached the math workshop portion of our task. Our math workshop will have four stations. At the small group station, your teacher will work with you to continue the learning about fractions. At the independent task station, you will complete a task without the help of your teacher. You are welcome to work with your peers on this task. At the application station, you will apply what you have learned to a new situation. Collaborating and working with your peers is encouraged at this station. At the math game station, you will play fraction cakes. So to play fraction cakes, you will need the fraction cake spinner with a paper clip. You will need your fraction cakes cutouts and this game board. Okay, so the goal of this game is to fill all of your cake pans. And so the way you'll do that is you will start by spinning the spinner. 
Okay, I get one fourth. So I'm going to find the piece one fourth and I'm going to place it on one of my cake pans. Okay, my other partner will spin and they'll take their turn and we'll keep continue taking turns. Okay, this time I got a half. So I can either choose to fill the same cake pan or fill a different cake pan. But however I work this, my goal is to fill the pan. So I don't have to put the same two pieces. I don't have to keep loading one pan with pieces. I can spread them out. Um, the player that first fills all their cake pans is going to be the winner. Um, however, if there is a player that spins a fraction piece that can't be used, like let's say all of my plates, all of my pans are mostly full, but I spin a half and that half won't fit on any of my pans, then I lose my turn for that round. It is now time to begin math workshop. Press pause when you are ready to continue, press play. Congratulations, you have now reached the end of task two. Today we created a collage that resembles the compositions of Paul Klee. We also learned how to partition objects into equal parts and name the fractional parts. We hope you enjoyed task two. See you next time for task three.